All right, my name is Vance Vredenberg. I'm an amphibian ecologist and I'm going to collect a skin swab from a salamander, a terrestrial salamander, found here in California. Uh, it's a technique that works really well because it doesn't harm the animals and we can collect a lot of these data and release the animals back into the wild and look at disease dynamics in natural populations. I'm going to do it from a salamander called the Encetina salamander. They're found here in California. These are really interesting animals. They are lungless salamanders. They're quite big, they get a little bigger than this. Um, and there's lots of color variation um, across the different subspecies here in California. One thing to be aware of with salamanders is that when you're handling them, you have to be really gentle with them because they can actually autonomize their tails um, as a defense mechanism against predators. So we don't want them to lose their tails from the sampling technique, so we want to be very careful. And you can see right there um, where they can do it, at the constriction at the base of the tail. They have special muscles that pinch off the tail and they don't even bleed when they do that. The other thing you'll notice is that this animal does li not like me to hold it upside down. Okay, so we want to do whatever we can when we're collecting these data to not stress the animal out. So I'm going to hold it up kind of like this and swab from the bottom. All right, so to do this, I need a pair of gloves, which I already have on. I need one of these special s swabs that we use. Okay, it's made of synthetic cotton. Um, and then I need a vial, which I have down there, which I'll use in a second. All right, so I'm going to hold this animal up, and I'm going to take 30 strokes from the ventral side, the bottom side of the animal. Oops, don't drop it. All right, um, now I'm also going to try to swab his little fingers, his little toes and fingers as part of that. But it's a little hard to do. All right, I'm going to squeeze him too hard. All right, little guy, we're done. We're done with the swabs. So now I can put this little guy back down and I can break off the little swab and put it in its vial. And this is what we will later, later extract DNA from and run the quantitative PCR to see if it's infected with the particular pathogen that we're studying. This salamander right here in front of us is the Batrixeps luciae salamander from the Santa Lucia Mountains here in California. Um, there are many species of this group here in California, uh, close to 30, that have been described so far. Now these guys like to walk a lot when you're holding them, they're really small and delicate. So this sampling uh, regime that I'm going to show you, if you do it right, it doesn't hurt the animals at all. So it doesn't harm them. But with these little tiny guys, you have to take extra special care because they're so small. So what I do actually, because they get really squirrely, is I put them in a little Ziploc bag. Um, that helps me handle the animal. So I'm going to put them in there. And then what we want to do is take 30 strokes from this little swab right here. So here's our chytrid swab that we use. And um, there, there's our guy in the bag. So what I'm going to do is basically have him be in the bag. And I'm going to slide the swab in under him. And I'm going to sample the ventral side of the salamander. And try to get 30 swabs from this guy. It's very, very difficult, as you can see. They like to move around. I'm counting in my head. Twenty one, twenty two, almost there. Okay, that's 30. Now one of the things you have to be really careful of with these salamanders is that they can autonomize their tail. That is, they can pop off their tail on purpose. So you don't want to swab their tail because we don't want them to lose their tail. That could be really bad for their health, although they would survive it. Um, it's an adaptation they have to avoid predation, 
um, they're going to be losing a lot of energy that they've stored up over the years. So you don't want to do that. Okay. So as you notice, hopefully I swab from the head to just behind the legs, the rear legs, but I didn't swab the back of the tail almost at all. Okay. So be really careful with that. So now I've collected my 30 strokes from this animal. I'm finished with him. I can put him back in his cage or let him go into this log for outside. I crack off the tip, put it in the vial, and we are ready to go. Now all I have to do is label the side and the top so that we know who this is when we do the extractions and finally the qPCR assay.